What's up guys, my name is Technobo here for Troubleshoot and today I'm going to show you how you can install the new Premiere Pro beta on your computer and still keep your old versions of Premiere Pro installed and intact because of course betas can be glitchy and buggy and when it comes to your work, having stability is probably the best. Why exactly am I making a video on updating your Premiere Pro to a new beta version? Well, that's simply because the new beta version has NVENC hardware accelerated encoding for exporting videos. What exactly does that mean? Well, previously we've had CPU bound software encoding that only uses your CPU. We've had hardware encoding that only uses Intel QuickSync, which is a special feature built into newer Intel CPUs only, leaving AMD out of it. And it hasn't even tapped into the immense power that are NVIDIA or just graphics cards in general. And the new update has actually brought that feature to Premiere Pro, which is incredibly exciting. And I can't wait to make a video comparing this new hardware exporting to software exporting and obviously other third party plugins like Vocoder and possibly Daniel too. Either way, that's outside of the scope of this video today. I'll show you how exactly you can update, install a quote unquote second version of Premiere Pro and have it run alongside your main version, leaving both of them intact. So first of all, go ahead and open up the Adobe Creative Cloud installer or manager that you got with your Adobe software. Of course, if you haven't updated it in a while or you haven't got it installed, then simply head across to Google, give Creative Cloud a search, head across to the download page for it, click download and wait for it to finish. As you can see, that launcher over there looks very different to the old thin launcher that I'm quite used to. I haven't opened it up in more than a year. Either way, I'll click on it to install it when it's done, and then I'll hit yes when prompted for admin. Then I'll go ahead and hit continue, and it'll ask me to sign in using my browser, or I'll need to put in my details over here. It's opened up this page over here and automatically detected my Adobe account and signed in for me. Heading back to the Creative Cloud Launcher, you can see it's installing the latest version, so we'll just simply wait for this to finish. And once it's complete, you'll see it open up to the screen over here. When the program finally starts, you'll see it open up and it'll look something like this. As you can see, I've got Media Encoder and Premiere Pro already installed. How exactly do we go ahead and install another version of Premiere Pro, which includes this new beta NVENC exporting feature? Well, obviously I can't click open and if there was an update button, it would only update to 14.1. If we hit the three dots next to it and go to other versions, you can see the latest available version is 14.1, which is the update right before this one that doesn't have that NVENC feature. So how exactly do we get that NVENC feature? Well, it's actually rather simple. Head across to the beta apps section on the left hand side and find Premiere Pro beta. Then if we were to click on it, other versions, you'll see that we have Premiere Pro beta 14.2, where we can click install up here or clicking this install button will automatically install that one because it's the most recent. So I'll just click install and I'll wait for this to finish. Then either click open here or find it on your desktop or start menu. Then it'll eventually start up as such. As you can see, the icon is different and we're back to this familiar screen over here. I'll go ahead and open up a recent project. Over here, I have yesterday's video, which was my video on Discord black screen. As you can see, the layout is slightly different. I'll have to go ahead and adjust things to be the way that I like them. Either way, it's working as expected. Of course, if you had certain keybinds, they may be slightly different now, but it shouldn't be too difficult to go through and fix them. Once you've made sure your settings match your liking, the one thing that I do like to make sure of when reinstalling things is to go into File, Project Settings, General, and then make sure that CUDA is selected here for video rendering and playback. Once I have that selected, I can simply hit my keybind, Control M and we'll get the export screen over here. I still have Vocoder over here. Even though it was installed for a previous version, the plugin is still in the shared folder, so I'm able to go back to it. The preset, however, isn't here. Either way, that's not what we're here for. We're here for H.264. Then I'll go ahead and select a preset here. Of course, I don't have my one saved. I'll just go with the YouTube 4K Ultra one for now. Change it to 2K and then simply make sure that hardware encoding is selected next to performance. Of course, there isn't a new button that differentiates between Intel QuickSync hardware acceleration and NVENC, but if you hover over either the performance title over here or the actual box itself, you'll see it says it utilizes available NVIDIA hardware for quicker encoding. So after we're sure of the settings, I'll go ahead and save it here as test preset. 
Then I'll even go ahead and open up my task manager so you can see the difference between rendering here and rendering in the old version. So I've got my Ryzen 9 over here and I'll be tabbing between this and my 1080 Ti periodically just so you can see exactly what is happening. So I'll leave it on as is and I'll go ahead and try to export. I'll keep the NVIDIA tab open over here so you can see exactly what is happening. And as you can see, our video encoding performance has spiked. This little bit over here is from OBS and this extra bit over here is from Premiere Pro. Heading across to the CPU tab, you can still see it's hitting my CPU very, very hard, but the speed here should be very different to the speed in the old version of Premiere Pro, but we'll see that in a second. So I'll simply just wait for this to run through. I'll leave my recording going just to make sure that it has no effect on it. Then I'll go ahead and make sure to copy all of those settings verbatim and put them into the old version of Premiere Pro so I can go ahead and compare them directly. And I'll simply head back to the Creative Cloud Launcher and I'll click open next to Premiere Pro to open our old version that we still have installed. There we go, once it's opened up, I'll reopen my project. I'll make sure to simply just hit Control M, then I'll go to H.264 and I'll pick the same things that I did last time. YouTube 4K, I'll fix the resolution here and I'll set it to 60 FPS. Let me just quickly compare the rest of these settings for a fair comparison. Yep, they seem exactly the same. As you can see next to performance over here, it doesn't have the same NVENC text when you hover over it, and it's currently disabled because I have an AMD Ryzen chip and not an Intel chip inside of my computer. Intel QuickSync is specific to Intel CPUs. So this will be a software encoding export only. I'll make sure to save it as a different file onto the same SSD for the maximum performance, and I'll simply hit export. I'll open up Task Manager over here, and you can directly see the difference. So waiting for the initial spike with a little bit of animation there in the beginning, you can see that the video should dramatically start to speed up. Our CPU is being hit very hard by this. And having a look at our GPU one over here, which is my NVIDIA 1080 Ti, you can see that there's absolutely no spike on the video encode section. It is all just one solid mass over here from recording using OBS. Before there was a spike to about double this, which was about half of the total video encode performance available on my GPU itself. Of course, if I had a 2080 Ti or something obviously better than a 1080 Ti, this should be far faster than it actually is, but to a certain degree, it is still a very CPU bound. This one specifically is incredibly CPU bound because it's software only, meaning it's only the CPU doing the heavy lifting. Now, of course, on the screen over here, I'll have the total time that it took for both of these encodes to happen. And if you're interested in more direct comparisons between software, hardware, NVENC, vocoder, Daniel2, etc., all of these other different plugins and software, then make sure to check the description down below for a future video that will be coming out relatively soon, probably tomorrow, going through the differences and performance details of all of these different things. And of course, if I need to do any other videos on Adobe software, there'll be a playlist linked down below with a few good nuggets of information inside of it. Make sure to check out that playlist if you're interested in anything else or like my style of content. And there we go, it's done processing. As you can see, it drops away straight to where it was. Let's go ahead and compare the actual video files. They shouldn't be too different, though I did render these on completely different settings to what I usually do. The file size and the quality will be dramatically different but the comparison will still be there. So SSD, I have these two video files over here. The first one was with the NVENC hardware acceleration and the second one was software only. So here are the exact differences. The NVENC version is 149 megs. The software version is 143. As for quality difference, we'll go ahead and we'll see right now. So that's the NVENC version. And over here is the software version. Basically exactly the same, no difference. We'll have a look inside of Media Info as well, just for some extra information. So on the left, we have the NVENC version, as you can see at the very top, and the right, we have the software version. You can see they're both the exact same length. The overall bitrate is basically the same. This one's just slightly higher. But you can see exactly what settings each encoder used and a bit more information along those lines. So other than the software version having a bit more color information over here, there doesn't seem to be too much of a difference between these two. Other than that, the color space 
and everything else is basically exactly the same, meaning the two videos would probably be just as well interchangeable and they'd work well with YouTube, etc. etc. The file size isn't too different, which usually using NVENC, the file size difference can be massive, but here Adobe has done a really good job of keeping the file size around the same, the quality around the same, though they've dropped the render time dramatically. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this slightly different style of content. My name is Ben Sekno, be here for Troubleshoot. Hopefully you found this video useful and I'll see you all in the next video. Ciao.